Uh, welcome back to another one of our videos in the series that's looking at uh, the implications of the recent changes to the way Java is licensed. Uh, Simon, I would like to ask you a little bit more about OpenJDK. I mean, this is would appear on the face of it to be a simple solution for most customers. I mean, OpenJDK is free, um, so why should the changes to Java licensing impact on my business or on me as a developer? Um, so is OpenJDK a, a, a solution in most cases? It could be, but, mm -hmm. and there is a huge but. I thought there um, might be. It doesn't necessarily give you the solution that everyone thinks it might. Right. Uh, so I've seen it, I've, I've spoken to a lot of people who have said I'm running Java 8 today and I'm looking, OpenJDK is my, uh, my solution. So I no longer have to, I won't have to buy a license, yeah. I can just use OpenJDK. And Java 8 is, is the most deployed at the moment. Absolutely. So, yeah. um, and unfortunately, that's really not going to help you. Um, up until now, OpenJDK 8 mm -hmm. has uh, got its security updates from Java 8. Yeah. And with the end of the free public updates, those updates are going to dry up as well. So OpenJDK 8 will no longer get its updates from um, Oracle, and therefore it will have to get updates from the community. Up until now, looking at 6 and 7, some security updates have come in from the community, but very, very few in comparison with, with what you're getting in the commercial product. Sure. So uh, the first question is, is that level of security patching adequate for your business? Mm -hmm. The second question, of course, uh, is going to be whether the product that you're running is either A, supported, or B, will even work in OpenJDK. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's a piece of commercial software that you bought, it's been tested against Java 8, probably. Yeah, yeah. Therefore, the, the, the ISV in question, or the application developer in question, will have to be asked whether or not that they will support their yeah. product in OpenJDK. Um, and if they don't, that kind of limits you. Sure. Yeah. On top of that, there's the, the question of whether it'll actually even run. Um, OpenJDK is, is open source and is absolutely updated by the community. What there isn't is there isn't any guarantee from a, basically at the point of launch, both OpenJDK and Java are code compatible. They are yeah. absolutely the same. Mm -hmm. But they drift apart over time because the community will do sure. different things to, yeah. to Oracle. Mm -hmm. um, and it's quite possible that your application just won't run. Uh, I was talking to a customer the other day that trialed their applications in, uh, in OpenJDK 8 and only th they, they tried four applications and three of them didn't work. Really? Full stop. Yes. Yeah. So only one yeah. of them worked. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's kind of the level. Yes. In yeah, I, I was going to say, and would this also <coughs> apply to some of the other distributions, such as IBM versions of Java? And I, I can't talk about IBM because um, mm -hmm. I, I I honestly I don't know what IBM are doing, so I, I, sure, I yeah. can't talk for them. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a completely different distribution. Yeah. Um, what relationships they have in the background, or what they're planning to do. I don't know, they've, they've not made any public statements about it this time, so yeah. I can't answer that. Uh, there are a number of other distributions though, so if you've moved to OpenJDK 11, for instance, yeah. uh, Red Hat will be continuing to, uh, to apply security patches to OpenJDK 11, yeah. running on Red Hat until at least 2020, so that gives you a bit of a lifespan if you've already gotten to OpenJDK 11. OpenJDK 11 is massively different to apes, there's even less sure. likelihood I've heard that your this. application yeah. work. Mm -hmm. um, now, OpenJDK, I've, I've both been fairly negative up until now, I'd also like to say actually it can be a very secure platform for application development moving forwards, but it depends on using it. Um, OpenJDK 11 at the moment is getting security patches put back by Oracle. Yeah. So Oracle have committed to using open uh, to committed to putting back security patches into OpenJDK for six months right. of each mm -hmm. new release. So when OpenJDK 11 came out, they committed to patches at month one, month three, and month six. Yeah. At month six, OpenJDK 12 comes out, and at that point, Oracle will put security patches in at month one 
month three and month six. Yeah. But what it means is if you want to go with a secure platform and you're happy to do the development work, you can absolutely use OpenJDK, but you will be going to a new major release of OpenJDK yeah, so every six months. Yes, yeah, so that that's a could be a lot of overhead for the IT department in terms of um, development, testing, migration even. It's a big commitment. Quality assurance, yeah. It's a big commitment. And again, we, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we've spoken to a number of ISVs over the last yeah. six months. Um, and I have seen ISVs that have uh, basically looked at that and said, yeah, well, we, we develop for iOS, we develop for Android, we already have that sort of development cycle, that doesn't scare us. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah. But I've spoken to a number of other ISVs who have just drawn a sharp breath and yeah, and it would be said, no, totally we're impractical. We're sticking with Java 8, that, yeah. that's <laughs> no. I, I um, certainly wouldn't want to be retesting and, and every six months, I mean, that, that's, that could be quite a big overhead. Yeah. At a time when IT departments are, are stretched already. Yeah, uh, and, and just, just sticking with Java 8, you get patches until 2025 for the license. Yes. Yeah. The cost of the license in a number of cases um, does not outstrip what a significant cost would be in the update cycles. So, yeah, um, yeah quite often it's, it's just a case of uh, paying the license, it's a GM yeah. route. Uh, and I've, I've been looking at the pricing, and in fact, the, the pricing is quite favourable compared to what it used to be. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, so the, the new licensing costs are actually less than the support costs of the old licensing model yeah. was. Yeah. So it's, it's been priced very fairly. I mean, if you look at desktop, for instance, it's purely £22 per user per year. So it's kind of the same as an antivirus checker. Um, yes. yeah. it, it's not a huge sum of money. Thank you for tuning in to this video about the recent changes to the way Java is being licensed and the impact this may have on your business or on you as a developer. For further information or assistance in connection with Java licensing, please contact your account manager here at Grey Matter or call us on 01 364 654 100. Our Code Matter blog for developers also contains up-to-the-minute information about Java licensing.